everybody, it's your boy GS Luke here for our round four prize picks targets for the US Open. Round three was a huge success, went four and one with our main card, but more importantly, hit on a bunch of those three and four leg powers. Ended up going for over a 20 unit day, given that we hit on that 10x power play, a few 5x's there as well, and had a 1.5x payout with our main card. So can't complain about the results. Really looking forward to getting to that five of five. I mean, over our last few cards, we've had that one man out who's kind of just taken us back from having that clean sweep. We're going to get over that hump here at some point. The modeling has been spot on. Our hit percentage over the last month has been upwards of 70%. One of the best runs I've had on prize picks for quite some time. So like I said, just got to go out there, get rid of that one outlier performance, and we're going to have a massive, massive day. So excited to hop into it. Going to talk about how I expect the course to play for tomorrow, as well as the card that I'm putting together here for the fourth round. So excited to get into it. Let's go ahead and hop right on in. Alrighty, we've got data golf on the screen, and we can take a look at what we saw for the third round, which was a difficult golf course. Whether you played in the morning or the afternoon, it played to rate around three and a half strokes over par, which for a US Open venue is difficult, and that's difficult for even a major championship. Pin locations were absolutely tucked today, um, a lot of wind out there, and also wind coming from the north, which might not seem like a huge factor, except that we're up there in the northeast of the United States. You're getting some of that tundra cold wind coming from up there in Canada, and you saw an upwards of a 15 degree difference in terms of the actual temperature. The ball wasn't traveling as far, the greens and fairways were a little bit firmer, and you saw that play a huge factor when it came to play today. And for Sunday, it's going to be similar. It's the same wind direction coming from the northeast, which means you're getting a lot of that tundra air, but more importantly, you're dealing with similar wind conditions, right around 12 to 16 miles an hour of sustained winds for much of the day, and also a little bit of precipitation in the forecast. And while it's not a lot, right, just one one hundredth of an inch of rain projected for most of the hours here. Um, you can see on the weather forecast, you have right around a 20, 30 percent chance of rain in the morning and right around a 10 to 15 percent chance for the rest of the day. So while I wouldn't expect it to be raining all day, certainly not. You're going to see a storm come through at some point, which might make the greens a little bit more receptive than we've seen in the past, but could also lead to quite a few array shots. The guys that are playing when that rainstorm comes through might have to deal with some difficult conditions for two to three holes. So keep that in mind, you know, depending on when this weather ends up coming through, um, might be something to look at in terms of fades, right? If we have a single hole prop out there and you think that the players will be on that hole when it's raining, maybe fade them, right? Or vice versa, where you want to make sure you're targeting guys that aren't playing during that rainstorm. So as of right now, it could come at any point tomorrow, right? You know, it's projected rain there in the morning, also there in the afternoon. Um, might be something to keep an eye on come tomorrow morning. In terms of how I'm playing the morning versus the afternoon, because the wind is so consistent throughout the day, at least as of right now, I'm not really favoring one wave or the other. The guys that are in contention are always going to be a little bit more prone for fades here on Sunday just because they're dealing with that Sunday pressure, especially at a major championship, right? It's a completely different mental game for the guys that are up there in the top five of this golf tournament as compared to something like even the RBC Canadian Open, which was a huge event last week. There were a lot of eyes on that event, but there's nowhere near as much pressure on those guys as what you're going to see tomorrow. Alrighty, and now hopping into the player pool. So first, we're going to start with strokes, where I'm taking two fades, and the most notable of them is going to be Matt Fitzpatrick, who's at the top of the leaderboard. So we're taking the over at 71 strokes. He's somebody who's in first place right now, and anytime he's been in contention on the PGA Tour, he's fumbled the bag. He has no wins on American soil, and even though he's been a lot more prolific with his wins and you know actually getting in first place internationally, We've yet to see it on the PGA Tour, and like I just said, the guys that are in contention are going to be under an immense amount of pressure tomorrow. So at 71 strokes, I have them well above that, projected for closer to 72 and a half, not just because of the physical factor, and well, I should say, not just because of the mental factor in play, just getting ahead of myself, but also the physical factor. You're dealing with the scoring average that's going to be right around three and a half, four strokes over par, and for somebody in first place, he has no incentive to go out there and try and take it under par. He's going to play extremely consistent and realistically shooting one to two over par tomorrow might win this for Matt Fitzpatrick. I mean, let alone, you know, I expect him to play a little bit worse because of those mental conditions, um, shoot something closer to like 72 and a half or even 73 tomorrow. So I like our push potential there. If he shoots one over par, which would still be a solid round for him, 
that's a push, right? He'd have to shoot even par or better. And frankly, I don't see something like five, six under par winning this event. I see it being something in that one to two under par range. It's going to be absolute carnage out there. The conditions are even remotely as difficult as we saw today. And in truth, usually Saturdays are a little bit easier than Sundays on the PGA Tour, right? And Sundays, they tend to tuck pins even more than what you see on Saturday. There's a reason why we have the quote unquote Sunday pin locations that are so infamous around the industry is because they're so difficult, right? So if we're going to expect any movement in that winning score, I expect it to be even more difficult. So Matt Fitzpatrick, love the guy, like the fact that we can play him in fantasy and he scores for us most weeks. But when it comes to winning, actually putting, you know, the hammer down to the nail here in the last round, not sure if he really has that in him. The next fade we have, we're going to go to the bottom of the board. It's going to be Bryson DeChambeau at 73 strokes. He today shot six over par, should tell you everything you need to know about his game. And despite being solid through the first two rounds, I mean, we expected this to rear its ugly head. He's dealing with the wrist injury, hasn't had all that much practice. In, in general, this isn't a great course fit for him. It's a shorter golf course. It's all about being accurate off the tee and more importantly, accurate into greens. And Bryson DeChambeau has been absolute dog shit with his iron play, for lack of a better word, for his last one to two months. A lot of that has been due to the wrist injury ever since he's come back. has had a really hard time hitting the greens. His distance control hasn't been there. And in general... Bryson struggles with that even when he's healthy. I mean, we've seen even the best version of Bryson missing greens from 100 yards in. Just an immaculate driver, but when you get him in that fairway, he's not always that reliable from it. So somebody I'm willing to take the fade on here, if he just replicates what he did today, would comfortably be over that 73 number there, um, let alone the fact that I could see some negative regression, right? He's looked pretty good this far through the tournament, um, but has slowly but surely degraded, right? I mean, round after round, that score has gone worse and worse. And uh, I'd expect it to continue in that direction. So those are the two fades. This is only going to be a four-man card. So we head over to the birdie or better mark. And we're going to be taking the over on Scotty Scheffler. Scotty Scheffler, an elite-level player. Somebody I think wins this event. So obviously, that's main reason that I'm betting him here. I think he's going to capitalize on his opportunity. But more importantly, has been absolutely striping it was top five in shots gained approach to this point, top five in shots gained off the tee, and frankly hasn't even made putts. If he can go out there and do his thing with the flat stick, I see him making five, maybe even six birdies tomorrow. I know it's difficult, but with how accurate he is with the approach play, with how hot that putter can get, I mean, we saw it, you know, obviously with his four wins this year, um, I haven't projected for closer to 4.7 birdies, so well above the 3.5 number we have. And though we don't get the push in our back pocket at three, we're not here to push. We're here to go out there and win these cards. So I'm comfortable taking them even at the three and a half mark, um, even though it would be great to get them at three, right? But you're not going to get that, right? You know, if we want to take three, it'd have to be a Will Zalatoris or a Sam Burns, um, somebody like a Con Morikawa even. But I have a lot more confidence in Scotty Scheffler getting there, right? The approach play, um, all that is worth buying with that hook. Even the putting for Scotty Scheffler, right? He's been unbelievable this year. That hook is worth it to me. That quality of play increase is just... Um, worth everything you have to pay with that hook there. And lastly, the last prop we're taking is going to be Justin Thomas over three and a half birdies. He's somebody similar to Scotty Scheffler, who's been absolutely striping it to this point. And JT just cannot buy a putt. So for me, I'm buying in on the guys that just need to get a little bit lucky with the flat stick. And just like a Scotty Scheffler, actually even more so than a Scotty Scheffler, he needs to make some birdies, right? He's not in first place like somebody like a Matt Fitzpatrick. He's starting at three over par, seven shots off the lead. And for him to have any chance of getting into contention, and I can promise you, JT only has one goal tomorrow, and that is to win this golf tournament he's going to have to make a lot of birdies. So you know he's going to be aggressive. Even with those Sunday pin locations, he's one of the few players you know is going to be firing at every single one. And even if he shoots over a par tomorrow, he could clear the four, four birdie mark, right? He could make plenty of birdies, show that aggressive mindset. And like I said, all he has to do is find that hot putter and he could go out there and have a really solid week. So those are the four props I'm taking. I am not power playing this. This is going to be a flex play. So I'm playing it as a 7.5x flex play, 1.5x for getting all three right, which doesn't suck. A lot of it due to the value, right? Because we're taking two overs and two quote unquote unders because we're taking the overs on strokes, we do get that extra value, right? It's not just a 5x flex play there. If you want to power play it, maybe enter the flex play and then do like half a unit 
on the power play. What I'm going to be doing a little bit more often and where a lot of my quote unquote units are is I'm putting a whole unit on some three leg power plays. So I'm going to be taking Matt Fitzpatrick with Scotty Shuffler and Justin Thomas. I'm going to be taking Bryce DeChambeau with Scotty Shuffler and Justin Thomas. Then I'm going to be taking, you know, guys like a Scotty Shuffler and Justin Thomas with, you know, one of the two, just round robining them, right? There's going to be four cards I enter um, with every possible combination of three leg powers out of these four. So in total, there are six cards I've entered. The four leg flex play, which is the biggest unit that I'm entering. This will be an entire unit card, half a unit on the power play with these four, and then half a unit on all of those other three leg power plays. Guys, that's all I've got for the round four picks. Before you hop on out of here, let me know in the comments what your favorite prop on the board is. As per usual, we're going to have even more content coming through the rest of the year. So if you haven't already hit that subscribe button, I would highly recommend you go ahead and do that too. If you want to get these winning cards going forward, get all of the content, whether it's course breakdowns, fantasy content, prize picks, showdown videos when it comes to PGA Tour, you don't want to miss out on that. So make sure you subscribe to get notified when I upload. Also, make sure you go ahead and smash that like button. It goes a huge way with helping me grow the channel. And also, lets me know that you're enjoying this type of content, right? Let's me know that you want to see more of it in the future. So make sure you go ahead and hit that too. But best of luck with all of your slips here for the final round. Hopefully we can see some green here on Sunday and let's get this cash.